Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, on this memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness and his study of sacred doctrine, grant us, we pray, that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened for us through the veil, that is his flesh, and since we have a great, high pri a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and in absolute trust with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope, for he who made the promise is trustworthy. We must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. We should not stay away from our assembly, as is the custom of some, but encourage one another, and this all the more as you see the day drawing near. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. A lamp to my feet is your word, a light to my path. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, is a lamp brought in to be placed under a bushel basket or under a bed and not to be placed on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be made visible. Nothing is secret except to come to light. Anyone who has ears to hear ought to hear. He also told them, take care what you hear. 
The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you, and still more will be given to you. To the one who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. There is nothing hidden except to be made visible. Nothing is secret. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. Before entering St. Michael's, I lived in Chicago, near the place where the St. Valentine's Day Massacre occurred, the slaughter ordered by the notorious gangster Al Capone. Capone was the son of Italian immigrants who attended Catholic grade school, but maintained an attitude of quiet rebellion against authority until one day he actually exploded and struck a teacher and was expelled. He then worked various jobs around town while facilitating his moral decline by associating with bad companions. He joined one gang after another, working his way up to eventually becoming the kingpin of the Chicago underworld, controlling or influencing nearly every aspect of the city from behind the scenes. Eventually, he was arrested and imprisoned for tax evasion, which put an end to his violent career. Now, this was a man whose whole life was given over to criminal conspiracies. What encouraged the continuous escalation of his crimes was that he believed he could get away with it. He cloaked his activities in layers of secrecy, which hid them from the few police officers who he had not bribed to turn a blind eye. Because of this, he never worried that his crimes would come to light or that he would have to answer for them. There are many people who obey the law simply because they fear getting caught if they don't. They think it is not worth the risk, but only that threat of punishment keeps them in check. It is a fact that wherever there is little or no enforcement of the law, evil and chaos quickly escalate. This is because all law is derived from the divine law, which is primarily known by faith. Those whose faith is weak believe that there is no difference between the fate of believers and non-believers. Death eventually overtakes both, so they see no downside to resorting to sin to get what they desire. They go through life never considering the possibility of being held accountable after death. What a difference it would make in the world if everyone believed their actions would one day be subject to a judgment in which our most intimate secrets and hidden deeds would be revealed to absolutely everyone affected by them. Al Capone's downward spiral began with simple schoolboy mischief that he believed he could conceal forever. And this kindled an attitude in him which led quite possibly to the loss of his soul. But nothing is concealed from God. He knows our thoughts, our motives, and our every move. Yet he continues to maintain us in our existence even while we are offending him. It is a great mystery how God could give us a free will capable of putting him in such a position. In his mercy, he allows it, but in the end, his divine justice will be satisfied. 
Let us not fool ourselves into thinking that we can get away with anything, nor despair or grow bitter when it appears that evil wins the day. From our earthly perspective, it often appears that God does not enforce his laws. But we don't see the earth opening up and swallowing sinners like in the Old Testament because in the New Covenant, punishment is reserved for the afterlife. This does not mean that it won't one day come, but only that it is delayed until the general judgment where everyone will be shown how absolutely no one was treated unfairly by God and all will receive a place in the afterlife in accord with their earthly deeds. Let us pray that we never delude ourselves into thinking our sins can escape the notice of God. May our faith be strong enough to reject feelings of frustration or anxiety at the many imperfections of earthly justice and take comfort in knowing that in the end, everyone will receive precisely what they deserve from the hand of our just and merciful Father. Please rise. Let us turn to our generous God and bring him our prayers and petitions. For our church leaders, may the Lord conform them to his generosity in their faith and service. Let us pray to the Lord. For our civic leaders, may God grant them wisdom and courage in working for justice in our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who live in fear, may the Lord comfort them with the firm knowledge of his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our parishioners, may the Lord increase the measure of faith given to us. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us in the hope of eternal life, may the Lord soon bring them into his loving embrace especially for Nick Huang, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, receive our prayers and answer them according to your most holy will and through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all, <clears throat> all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Amen. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, may the sacrifice with which we gladly present on the feast day of St. Thomas Aquinas be pleasing to you, O Lord, O God, for taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Behold the faithful and prudent steward to give them their allowance of food at the proper time.
Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on this feast day of St. Thomas Aquinas they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.